Yes, I know. I'm not Reverend Dan. Uh, I am uh, filling in the pulpit this morning because Reverend Dan got very sick um, on Friday night and Saturday morning with COVID. And so we just like to uh, remember him and Diane and our thoughts and prayers. And uh, it is my honor to be able to lead us in worship today. So um, let us join together in our call. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. And those who sow in tears, they reap the shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing. They'll come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheep. Let us worship God. Please join me in our hymn of preparation, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, hymn number 118. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive all of our unrighteousness. In that spirit, in that manner, I invite you to pray with me the prayer of confession that is printed in the bulletin. In one voice, let us read. 
Forgive us, Lord, as we attempt to justify evil for evil. Help us to walk in the strength of your grace. Help us to forgive as you have forgiven us, even before we knew you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now hear these words of assurance for as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our transgressions from us. As a parent has great compassion and pity upon their children, so the Lord has pity and compassion on those who fear him. For know that nothing, neither life nor death, nor angels nor principalities, nothing above the heavens or below the earth is able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are a forgiven people, and knowing that we are forgiven, we are called to live in the way of the Lord. And this is the summary of the law. When Jesus was asked by a lawyer, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul, all of your mind and all of your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two things, loving God with all that you are and all that you have, and extending love to your neighbor, you will fulfill all the law and all the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our Gloria Patre.
thank the choir ensemble for their ministry this morning. I invite this time all the children to come forward, and we're going to share a brief time together. So come on down. Um, looking forward to seeing all of you, and um, great to have you. Thanks for coming. Oh, man. Yesterday you went what? Bowling. Bowling? Really? Oh, man, that sounds cool. Did you, did you have a fun time bowling? By one? Wow, you were pretty close to your dad. Man, that is great. Oh, you were 86 and he was 87. Wow. Wow. You guys are pros, aren't you? Good job, Dad. <laughs> well, I want to start with a good morning. So one, two, three, good morning. All right, good job, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a quick question for you. We are in a season of the church year, and do you know what the season of the church year that we're in? What, is, what do you think it is? Spring break. Yeah, that is the season of the church year. We are in spring break. <laughs> Yeah, that is, you know what, that is very true, we are celebrating spring break, so, uh, you know what, yes, we are getting ready for Easter, in the season when we're getting ready for Easter, when we remember the resurrection of Jesus, it's called Lent, it's called Lent, it's not Lent like, you know, you get out of the world dry or anything like that. It's called Lent, and it means the lengthening of days. In other words, our days are getting longer. Spring is coming, and so the days are getting longer, and we're so happy that it's not dark all the time like in the winter, and so Lent is a lengthening of the days, a reminder that spring and new life is coming, a reminder that Jesus gives us new life. And so this morning, um, as we are getting ready for that, during Lent, we kind of remember a number of different things, but one of the things we, re we remember is Jesus' great sacrifice for us on the cross. And in a way, that reminds us of God's great love for us. In John, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so... Lent reminds us of God's great love for us, and sometimes we sacrifice a little something. But, you know what? Every Sunday, Lent is a 40-day period, 40 days before Easter, except for Sundays, because Sundays are considered mini-Easters, like an opportunity for us to celebrate and be happy. And so, it reminds us of God's love for us and a way to celebrate. Kind of like the Lord's Supper. Well, I am giving you something this morning that will remind you of Jesus' great love for us. And that is a kiss. This morning you all get a kiss, and that's what Sundays remind us of. God's kiss to us, that he loves us so very much that he offers us life, which is abundant, full, and eternal. And it's kind of a sweetness, like the supper that we're going to celebrate. And so the big thing that I want you to remember all of your lives is that God kisses you with his love each and every day. And so I want to give you, on your way out, I'm going to give you a, a kiss reminding you of God's kiss and love to you. But before we do it, pardon me? The bread? No, we're not going to do that. Before we do that, I want to sing a song, and it's one of my favorite songs. It's one that I learned when I was, and I've been told no more jumping around or any dancing or anything like that. So we're going to sing a very simple yet beautiful and profound song, and it's called Jesus Loves Me. Okay? So, yep, we're going to sing together. So I want you to remember that Jesus loves you, and that's the best. That's the best thing you'll ever know is that Jesus and God loves you. 
Let's sing it together, okay? We'll try. You can hear it. These guys are going to help me, and I will sing it, and then if you can sing it with me, okay? Yep. Ready? Jesus. Ready? Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. And of course, good morning to those who are joining us via a live stream as well, uh, who uh, I'm sure would like to be with us within the four walls here in person, but uh, for their own, their own particular reasons are able to uh, join us via live stream. So uh, all of us are welcome uh, this morning. And as uh, Reverend Larry, uh, uh, indicated uh, Reverend Dan is not with us this morning, so Reverend Larry, who is our associate in mission, uh, is leading our worship uh, today. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick broad brush here. Uh, we have got a, uh, a busy Sunday service ahead of us here. Uh, for those of you, in, uh, I, I could say for those of you uh, joining us live stream, I, if you're not able to, to, uh, to make it for our communion service here this morning, uh, we will have a drive through communion as we have uh, for the past couple of years uh, here. Uh, we will have a drive through communion uh, here in the carport area. Uh, we have some special greetings from uh, a homebound member that uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we all appreciate how much she appreciates us as well. Uh, Information here on one great hour of sharing uh, that uh, ministry that, that we are uh, observing. And uh, of course, our hearts are heavy for uh, those in Ukraine. We hear the news every day, and there is an opportunity uh, for those who, who are able to, uh, uh, to do uh, what, what they're able to do to help Presbyterian disaster assistance. That information is also there in the bulletin. Reverend Larry and the children uh, talked about the fact that this is the season of Lent. We have Easter flowers available uh, and uh, the sign up, uh, the, the forms necessary to, uh, uh, for those who are interested in uh, decorating our sanctuary with Easter flowers are out there on the tables uh, as you enter the, the sanctuary. They're pink forms. Uh, as well, for the Lenten season, the, men's, uh, the men are, um, will be hosting a Good Friday breakfast, and the Presbyterian women will be on the road, going across, heaven, for heaven's sake, the, the bridge. They're going to go across. <laughs> make it early. <laughs> they're going to go across. They're going to they're gonna brave it, and they're going to go across the bridge for the Presbyterian women event over at First Presbyterian Church in Grand Haven. Uh, Holy Week, uh, right around the corner. Uh, all of the events uh, associated with Holy Week uh, that, that uh, uh, we will be observing here at SLPC 
uh, are listed there uh, as well. So that's just a quick broad brush of the weekly newsletters, Reverend Dan likes to call it. Oh, by the way, thank you, Ruth. I got that little nod there. Uh, take this opportunity to, uh, to take the friendship pads and the pew racks ahead of you and jot down your name and uh, pass it down the pew. So uh, we're all familiar with each other by name as well as, as face. Um, are there any other <clears throat> announcements or prayers that uh, I may not have mentioned that uh, our church family would like to lift? If not, let's take this opportunity to greet the church family about us then. You may be seated. I do have a couple of, uh, prior to going to prayer this morning, a couple of people that I'd like to uplift um, as well, um, families and that sort of thing. Um, I got a call from Judy yesterday that um, Darcy Snippy um, passed away. And so we want to remember Donna and the family all of the family and our prayers um, in the midst of that sorrow and, and grief. So I want to also uh, uplift to you um, Roger and Barbara Jager. And uh, Roger was in the hospital about a week ago for four or five days. And Barbara continues to uh, her care under hospice. So I'd like you to remember um, Roger and Barbara. Philip Morris um, has a severely broken arm and undergoing uh, rehab for that. I talked to Jenny before the service. Jenny Oltoff and her son John had surgery this past week, asked that we would keep him in our prayers. And also Joyce Smith, who continues her rehab following uh, accident back in November. So those are just some people um, that we can uplift together in prayer. Um, many others, I'm sure, on your hearts and minds. Um, and especially remembering uh, Reverend Dan, um, he told me that it was a pretty uh, hellish 12 to 14 hours that he went through the other night. So um, please uh, remember Reverend Dan and Diane and your thoughts and prayers as well. So let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer together. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, it is good to know that you, the creator of the entire universe, who have called into being all things, tenderly bend your ear to hear our prayers, our concerns, and our wants. For you are not only an omnipotent God, all-powerful and all-knowing, but you are also a personal God who comes to us in the midst of the night, in the morning hours, and during the day that you continue to go before us, clearing the way, beside us, hand in hand, and behind us to pick us up when we have fallen and gone astray. Lord God, as we gather here this day, we give you thanks for your continuing providence in our lives. 
We pray and ask that you would be close to those who are sorrowful. And we pray for the family of Darcy, and we ask that you would be their peace that passes all understanding. We pray that you would be close to not only her family, but all families who grieve and sorrow this day. We pray for Roger and Barbara. We pray for John. We pray for Phil and for Joyce. We ask, Lord, that each of them would know your healing touch, would know your presence in their lives, would know your love that will not let them go. We pray for Reverend Dan and Diane. We ask that you would restore him, that you would give him um, a full measure of your healing and of your grace, and that you would be with Diane as she attends to him. We also pray that you would protect her from this illness as well. We pray this day for all those who have been struck down by COVID as well as other illnesses and ask, Lord, that you would be the healing balm in their lives and that you would assure them of your presence in the midst of the strife. We pray and ask, Lord, for not only personal concerns of this congregation and this community, but we pray for the larger community. We pray for this world and we uplift the people of Ukraine. We pray for the leadership of this world, for all the leaders that you would be in their hearts and in their minds and that peace would come and that your powerful presence would be made, made known through grace and mercy. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would continue to walk with us as we journey toward the cross with you and through the cross to the resurrection of our Lord. For it is that that gives us hope and gives us peace. And so, Lord God, in this moment, we also lift to you our own personal prayers. And in silence, we lift them up to you. Lord, we end our prayer in the same way we started, giving thanks and great gratitude that you continue to bend your ear to hear our prayer. We pray these things and ask them in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture this morning, um, Dan chose a different scripture reading for the lectionary. I chose, I didn't know that he chose the Luke 4 one. I chose two different ones, so we're going to be going to uh, two different texts, and so first, I'd like you to turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians is a letter that Paul wrote, and uh, it's in the New Testament, and it's found in your pew Bibles on page 954. So it's Philippians chapter 3, and I'm going to be reading verses 4 through 14. And then following that reading, we'll go to the Gospel of John. So from Philippians chapter 3, beginning reading at verse 4. Paul says, Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. For if anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For this, his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness in my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ." the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection 
from the dead. And then from Philippians, turning back to the Gospel of John, um, chapter 12, and uh, beginning reading at verse 1, and in your pew Bible, I will tell you what page that is on in just a moment. John chapter 12, on page 874, the fourth gospel of the New Testament. Gospel meaning the good news. Listen now and hear the word. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus, who was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet, wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? And the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it, and so that she might keep it for my burial. You always will have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have entitled uh, the message this morning, Grace and Gratitude. Kind of put it together real quick. So, <laughs> But uh, hopefully it will bear fruit. Let's pray together. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation and thinking of these your people be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our everlasting Redeemer. Amen. Six weeks ago, late on a Friday evening, as Sarah and I were getting ready for bed, I had an uncomfortable feeling. In the center of my upper chest, I had not had this tight feeling before, and it lingered for a little while. I tend to think my pains will go away. <laughs> so I tried to walk it off, do a little stretching, drink a little water, but it persisted. Sarah, all the while, was encouraging me to consider going to the hospital. Finally, after about 45 or 50 minutes, um, I relented, and off we went to Mercy ER. It was about 1.30 in the morning. You know, it's kind of interesting to see who and how many people are in the ER at 1.30 in the morning in Muskegon. I found out very quickly how to get immediate action and attention as I shared with the registration person that I was having some chest pain. They immediately put me in a wheelchair and thankfully with Sarah by my side went into a room and we got lots of questions thrown at us and electrodes placed all over my body for an EKG. Next thing we know, we are racing down the hall in a hospital bed, going to a specialized room as doctors shared with us that I was in the midst of a heart attack. The medical staff attended to me, began shaving my body, and shared that what they were hoping to do, a heart catheterization and a stent placement. But they also shared with me worst case scenario. I might have to have emergency open heart surgery. And then that question came. Do you know the question, that ultimate question? You, do you know it? What is that question? But do you want to be resuscitated? 
and have extraordinary measures should your heart stop. In that moment, you kind of pause and reflect. And what came to me while I reflected upon my own mortality was multifaceted and quite personal. I wasn't sure I really wanted to share it. But first, there was a sense of gratitude. For the life I have been given. A good and filled life. Heaped with an extravagant measure of God's grace. There is also a sense of helplessness. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> For I was and I always have been totally dependent upon God. And his mercy and his grace. And finally, um, there was a sense of sadness felt for those who would be pained by my passing. It is all too int intimate and vulnerable moment. <laughs> Yet, one we will all face. How then shall we live? I choose to live in the fullness of God's grace. With a heart of gratitude. For each moment we've been given. That I've been given. I didn't think I'd do this. I'm sorry. As I said, I didn't really know if I wanted to share that with you, but it felt like God calling in some way, um, saying, you know, scripture text for today from Philippians, Paul in some way is confronting the same issue, said, hey, I've been the best Jew there possibly could be. I've done all the things right. I've been born of the tribe of Benjamin. I kept all, all of the law and all of the prophets. I've, I've done it all. And you know what? In a way, it's all rubbish. <laughs> because when you stand before God, you can't possibly say, look how wonderful I am. Accept me into your kingdom. It's not that way. I've heard people say when they, you ask them, are you going to heaven? Well, I've been pretty good. I've lived a pretty good life. You think that's going to get you into heaven? <laughs> Give me a break. It's all about the mercy of God. His grace. <laughs> no one can work their way into heaven. It's not a prize, folks. When I when I when I'm before God, I'm gonna I'm just gonna be flat down and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. That's all that's all you can do. Your creator. How can you ever work your way into heaven? You can't. And that's what Paul is saying in, in Philippians chapter three. He's saying it's all about God's grace to you. To you and to me, an unconditional love where he opens up his arms and he says, I love you this much. That's what Lent is about. That's what the, the crucifixion is about. That's what Easter is about. It's all about the grace of God in our lives. That's it. It's just about grace. I can say I was pretty good. You know, 
okay, God, I was a minister for a while. You know, I tried to treat people good. I tried to pray. You know, I was part of the Reformed Church and the Presbyterian Church. Good credentials. Going to get me in? No. No. But His grace will get you in. Yep. So the first thing I want you to remember, it's by faith, folks. It's just all about faith and the grace of God in your lives. When you reach that ultimate question, just have to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Second thing I learned is this, <laughs> and that's what the woman, you know, Mary, who, who did this extravagant thing to Jesus, and, you know, Judas has, you know, had a little, and, and this happened to Jesus a couple times. You'll notice in the Gospels that there was another incident where Jesus was anointed, and a woman um, anointed him and then wiped his feet with her hair, and uh, you know what it tells, tells me? You got to live in the moment. <laughs> you just got to live in the moment. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He said, hey, she's done a beautiful thing to me right now, right here. The whole house is smelling beautiful because of this wonderful thing that she has done for me, anointing me in preparation for my burial. She lived in the moment. At that moment, she didn't say, I'm going to save this for another time or I'm going to give this to the poor. She was so glad to be in the presence of Jesus, her Lord, that she did this extravagant thing. At a moment's notice, she went to his feet, poured the nard upon the sweet perfume, incense throughout the entire house, and said, Jesus, I love you this much. You know, I, I, I've always said, I mean, you've heard it before, the old cliche, haven't you? Um, today is a gift. <laughs> That's why they call it the what? The present. Today is a gift. Each day, each moment is a gift, my friends. Live it to the fullest. And the way I think that we're called to live it in the fullest, is with deep gratitude each and every day that we might reflect somehow our thankfulness for the moments that God gives to each and every one of us, whether they be at the valley, <laughs> because that's when you're only looking up. <laughs> you can only look up. Or whether it be at the mountaintop and we celebrate together. The ultimate question, how then shall we live, people? We shall live in the fullness of God's grace and we respond with great gratitude for every moment he gives to us. That's what I pray for all of us. Let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks. Thanks for a reminder each and every day that this is a gift. And that's why it is your present to us. May we together live in the fullness of your grace and respond with deep gratitude for every moment given. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you to, to uh, share with us in the offering. And uh, as we offer our gifts, we offer them in gratitude um, for all that God has given to us. Let us respond in, in gratefulness.
many ways, this is the kiss of God. Um, this table that we are about to celebrate and prepare together, we remember the words of institution on the night in which he was betrayed after having given thanks for it. Jesus took some bread and he broke it and he said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. As many times as you eat of it, remember me. And in the same manner, after they had supped, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. As many times as you drink of it, remember me. And so the bread which we break and the cup which we bless is the communion of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us in the remission of our sins. We're reminded in this supper that... Uh, God stretched out his arms upon a cross and said, I love you this much. This is an open table. It is an open table of all who believe and confess in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So all are welcome to come and share in the fullness of God's love and his grace. Um, so, my friends, come, for all things are now ready. I invite the elders to come forward. And as they're coming forward, if there's someone who isn't able to come forward um, uh, when we have the communion, uh, we will have a rover and they will be going and um, delivering communion to you if you're not able to come forward on your own. So. Are you our rover, Judy? There we go. My friends, come for all things are now ready.
the free bread on my, in the little cup, okay? Come forward. This celebration points us back looking at God's great love for us made known in Jesus Christ. But it also reminds us of the present communion of the saints, those on your left and your right, those who love you and care for you, 
but it also points us ahead to the future, to that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so, as we are here, we give thanks for the kiss of God in this communion. Terry, I'm going to ask you to stand with me and sing the song that's on the back of your hand. I got to tell you that um, I am thankful. I, uh, I was kind of fearful about preaching again. <laughs> um, it takes a little bit of energy and uh, that sort of thing. So um, I haven't really um, preached um, since my heart attack. So um, I'm thankful I made it through. Yay! <laughs> so, um, and if I was a little too emotional for you, I apologize, but... Um, so, anyway, so I knew it was going to be okay when I came in, and the first song was A Mighty Fortress is Our God, one of my favorite songs, and it reminded me so much of being a little kid in front of the TV watching Davy and Goliath, any of you remember that, um, Davy and Goliath, hey Davy, you know, anyway, so it's a good thing, so, um, so. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs> 